Hi friends, a warm welcome to our channel. I am Chanda Mama, and today we are going to see the story Rishya Sringa, retold from the Mahabharata, published by Adarsh Chitrakatha. So let's go towards the story. An introduction of the Rishya Sringa. The story of Rishya Sringa, as told in the Vana Parva of the Mahabharata, is a plea. for liberal education insulated education makes for inadequate development of body and mind in the sense that is insecure being subject to influence of worldly forces liberal education on the other hand is a guarantee against the trauma of subsequent and sudden revelations it is a measure of the strength of the moral fiber of ascetic india that the restraints of upbringing imposed on rishi singha led him into not into ignorance but to innocence it was untainted and therefore responsible for his achievement of bringing rains and fertility to a past and barren land so let's continue reading this story so let's start this story rishi singha as the austere old hermit vibandaka looked upon the handsome youthful lineaments of his son rishishringa he was pleased he remembered the day when the enchanting apsara urvashi had for a moment disturbed him what a divine form i just saw now that innocent doe seems to be affected by the aura she has left behind A few days later another beautiful damsel had come up to him with a baby in her arms Lord accept your son my son yes your son i am a celestial maiden i had once offended brahma and was cursed by him to be born on earth as a doe when i repeatedly pleaded with him to revoke the curse none can transgress the law of karma my words cannot be withdrawn however you may regain your own form and status in heaven if as a doe you beget a son of a rishi by my supernatural powers i have begotten this son of you on his head he bears the stamp of his origin will you accept your son o sage and rear him as a rishi i certainly will he shall be called Rishya Sringa and shall grow up to be the most virtuous among men. As Vibandaka had walked away, the celestial maiden had vanished. I shall bring him up in isolation, lest he may be tempted away from the duties of a continent life. So, taking the child deep into the forest, away from the world of men. Sage Vibandaka had reared his son. with utmost care and rishi singha was a young man now how innocent and pure he is had i not kept him isolated he might not have shown so with the light of chastity son i am going to gather fruits hew the logs and set the sacrificial fire going while i am away at about that time king lomapada of anga was performing a yagna propitiate indra the lord of heaven rain and thunder suddenly o king the sacrificial fire does not blaze up have you broken any of the customary rules to be observed during the yagna asked the rishi lomapada was guilty but he dared not admit it no holy sirs i haven't broken any rules you lie to the earlier sin you add the sin of falsehood wait please those decent me i shall atone for my lapses said the king we shall have nothing to do with you henceforth said the holy sirs and left the place in the heavens indra too was dis- displeased and displeasured king lomapada has no clear vision of his dharma i shall withhold my life 
giving rain from the kingdom of Anga. Without rain, the crops withered and failed. Famine struck the land. Lomapada sent forest ministers. I'll go to Ayodhya and see my friend Dasharada. Perhaps his, tree, his priest may be able to help and advise me. Meanwhile, you tell the priest here that I have gone away to atone for my misdeeds, that I am trying to make some amends. When Lomapada reached Dasharada's place, my friend, you here, but where is your retinue, your insignia? Dasharada, I am in trouble. I need your help. Ask King Lomapada to Dasharada. Well, Lomapada told Dasharada the whole story. Don't worry, my friend. My priests will advise you. They have never failed me. When the royal priests of Ayodhya heard the predicament of their monarch's friend, O oh, king, send for a sage, Vibandaka's chaste son, Rishyasringa. He dwells in the forest, knows nothing about the female sex, and talks and takes delight in simplicity. The moment the true hermit sets foot on your kingdom, there is not the least doubt that the clouds will burst and pour rain forthwith. Lomapada returned to Anga and sent for his ministers. I have found the solution. The great hermit Rishasringa has only to step into Anga and our woes will end. What is the matter? Why do you look so sullen? Asked the king. My lord, his father would never hear of it. It would be futile to try a direct invitation. Then find some other means, whatever they be. The sage must be brought here at all costs before my subjects perish for want of food and water. My lord, not send some courtesans to entice him here. They being women of the world are cleverer in such matters. An excellent idea. Send for the most accomplished courtesans of the land, says the king. When the courtesans were brought before the king, Sage Vibhandaka's son, Rishyasringa, must be brought to the kingdom, secure his confidence, tempt him and bring him here. The courtesans were stunned. Tempt the son of Vibhandaka? I dare not, said one of the courtesans. But dare we disobey the king, said another. Yet, if we succeed, we would earn the merit of saving the kingdom from famine. I am willing to dare the wrath of the sage for such a good cause, said another courtesan. Then, trusting in fate, as we always do, I shall go with you, since, and so shall I, and I, repeatedly told by courtesans, manage to salvage the kingdom from famine and travel towards the and travel towards the uh, meeting the hermit. In the chief courtesan stepped forward, O king, I shall try to bring the great hermit here uh, to the king Lomapada, the king of Anga. The king turned to his ministers and told, Give her all that she needs for the mission and a special gift of gold and jewels for herself. So it shall be done, my lord, said one of the ministers. Taking with her a bevy of courtesans and some workmen, the chief courtesan left for the forest to meet the hermit and bring him to the kingdom. In the forest, build a beautiful floating hermitage as you can, adorn with, with various plants and creepers and exotic trees laden with flowers and fruits, said the chief courtesan. Thoroughly skilled in the art of creating an illusion, the workmen completed the task in no time. Madam, it is ready. Would you care to see it? The chief courtesan was delighted by their workmanship. Good. Just as I had visualized it, now it have it moved near the sage's hermitage. When you find the sage's son alone, come and tell me, said the chief courtesan after seeing the floating hermitage. His mission accomplished. The man soon returned. Vibandaka 
has gone deep into the forest in search of roots and fruits. Rishasringa is alone in the hermitage. The courtesan turned to her daughter. Go, my love, and do what is necessary. My blessings are with you. A little later, the courtesan's daughter stood before Rishasringa. I hope all is well at your hermitage. How are your finances and the study of sac sacred lore progressing? Is your father pleased with you? Asked the courtesan's daughter. Rishasringa was stunned by the beauty of creature before him. He looks as radiant as the sun and so very charming too, thought Rishasringa. The next moment, who are you? Where is your hermitage? What brings you here? I have come to pay you a visit. My hermitage is three yojanas away from here. Then me, let me wash your feet and make obeisance to you. No, no. Wait. The vows I have taken forbid me to accept your obeisance. But I must honor you in my own way. I must embrace you according to our custom, said the courtesan's daughter. Rishya Singha had never seen any other human being except his father. So he thought that the courtesan was a young sage like himself. Your way of showing respect is delightful indeed, said Rishya Sringa. Now, we shall eat these exotic fruits that I have brought. But first, cast off your coarse clothing and wear these silken robes, said the courtesan's daughter. Rishya Sringa wore the fine clothes. How smooth and soft they feel. Come, sit by me on this mat. Won't you give the honor of embracing me once again? said Rishya Sringa. The courtesan was about to embrace him when suddenly, footsteps, the Rishi is back. I must depart, said the courtesan's daughter and thought to leave. I have to go now. I have performed a sacrifice at a certain hour. I must rush to my hermitage. But will you come again? Won't you? asked Rishya Sringa. I will. I will. Now let me go. And she leaves. Rishya Singha let go her hand, but his mind was disturbed. Why am I so sad to see her go? Thought Rishya Singha. On returning back, she sees the sage. Just in time, the fates are kind, all is sure to go well. As the sage approached the hermitage, What's this forbidden fruit? Who has defiled this place? Where is my son? Thought Vibandaka, the locks are still unhewn. The sacrificial fire has not been lit. What has Rishasringa been doing? This was the thought of Vibandaka. And then he saw Rishasringa. Rishasringa, what are you wearing? Where did these silken robes come from? The sage walked up and stood before him. Vibandaka's son was thinking. He never responded. That lost look in his eyes. My son is sad and dejected. His face has lost its normal luster, thought Vibandaka. Only did Rishnasinga notice his father. What's the matter with you, my son? Has anyone been here? That was the only cue the innocent Rishnasinga needed to speak what was nearest to his heart. Oh, for the a beautiful brahmachari came us to visit us. He had masses of lovely hair. His complexion was color uh, of a ripe mango and his eyes were as large as lotus petals, explained Rishasringa to his father Vibhandaka. The beauty of his form and the lovely alt of his voice I cannot describe. A woman here in the hermitage, it was a Trakshasa or up and Apsara, thought Vibandaka. And oh father, the fruits he gave me were soft and sweet and had a special tang. And, and when he embraced me, I felt that I was transported to heaven itself. Shall I look for him and bring him here? The sage was in dilemma. Without a doubt, it was a woman. What, is, what shall I tell my son? How shall I protect him without destroying his innocence? 
At last, Vibandaka slowly turned to his son. My child, that was no brahmachari. It must have been a demon in disguise. Come here to disturb our penances and sacrifice. I shall hunt him out and punish him, said Vibandaka and left. Vibandaka went deep into the forest and for three whole days he searched, but the wretch has left no trace. Without any success, he returned to the hermitage. Did you find him, father? asked Rishisringa. No, I didn't find, but if he comes here again, chase him away, said Vibandaka to his son. But his words fell on deaf ears. For a few days later, when Vibandaka was away, he is come, the Brahmachari has come, thought Rishisringa. He rushed towards her. Welcome, Brahmachari. Where have you been all these days? I have been waiting for you said Rishyasringa to Kodisan's daughter. Oh, the sacrifice took longer than I expected, said the Kodisan's daughter to Rishyasringa. Are you not going to give me your customary honor by embracing me again? It's a divine way indeed, said Rishyasringa to the Kodisan's daughter. Better still, take me to your hermitage. My father doesn't believe what I say about you. He may chase you away if he comes, said Rishyasringa to the courtesan's daughter. The courtesan seized the opportunity. Come, then come with me. I'll take you away for all time if you like. A hand in hand, both of them run towards the floating hermitage. And both of them leave the hermitage of the Vibandaka sage. What a beautiful hermitage and so many brahmacharis here. Come, come my child, we will take you to even more beautiful hermitage than this one. As they sailed towards Anga, Rishisringa learnt much that he had been denied from. We are not brahmacharis, we are women. You are a man, the whole world needs men and women, said the courtesan. My son, after the period of learning, men marry women and become householders. And together they propagate and preserve the race. Only a few brahmacharis remain all their life. Thus did the old courtesan instruct Rishyasringa in the ways of the world. They soon reached their destination. The moment Rishyasringa set the foot on the soil of Anga, flashes lightning lit the sky, claps of thunder rent the air, and the rain came down in torrents almost drown, drowning the jubilant shouts of joy. Glory be to Rishisringa, and the drought has ended, said the villagers of Anga. Meanwhile, at the palace, rain, the courtesans have succeeded. Rishisringa is here, let's go and welcome him, said the king, Lumapada. And the king and his ministers rushed to the barge. It's the king himself come to receive you said the courtesan. A pleasantly surprised Rishasringa was garlanded and anointed with the sandal paste by Lumapada himself. We shall now go to the apartments specially built for you in my palace, said the king to Rishasringa. As he entered the apartment, fresh surprises awaited Rishasringa. Who is that? She is fairer even than the maiden who brought me to this very heaven. She is my daughter, Shanta. I give her to you to wed, said the king. Shanta came forward and garlanded Rishisringa. But in the days that followed, while Rishisringa enjoyed the pleasures of a householder's life, Lovapada spent sleepless nights. He was afraid. The terrible sage is sure to divine that his son is here. He will come to Anga and pronounce a curse on me, thought the king, and he was sleepless. I must act so that I at least break the tide of his fury before he reaches the palace. He was walking into the palace and thinking of how to manage the Vibandaka's curse. The next day, he sent for the chief of cowards. Sage Vibandaka will soon be visiting us. Take some gifts and cows from the palace and ask your men to line the road into the kingdom. And in the meanwhile, 
Sage Vibandaka had returned to the hermitage. Rishishtranga, my child, where are you? Vibandaka was looking for his son, Rishishtranga. He searched all around the hermitage and in the forest. Rishishtranga, he was searching for his son. Disturbed, he sat down to meditate using all his yogic powers. Suddenly, as Lumapada anticipated, he divined the situation and he was furious. So the culprit is the king Lumapada. He shall pay heavily for this, thought Vibandaka. And he was furious. And he made his way to Anga. When he neared the kingdom, holy sage, accept these gifts. These kind are from our master. Who is your master? Rishisanga, your son, said the courtesan. As he approached nearer and nearer to the palace, revered sir, we are your son's slaves. He has commanded us to welcome you with these cattle and gifts, said the ministers. Vibandaka's anger gradually subsided. Accept these gifts from your son, our master, and bless us, O sage, with your compassionate glance. We are here to carry out your orders, said the ministers. By the time he reached the palace, his anger was totally appeased. Lomapada himself was there to wash his feet. Forgive me, O sage. May and your kingdom, you and your kingdom ever prosper, said Vibandaka to the king Lomapada. When Lomapada led the sheikh into the Rishasinga's apartments, he beamed with joy at the sight that he met his eyes. Is that my son? I see he before me, seated in the state like Indra in the heaven, thought Vibandaka. And if not, is not the pious princess Shanta seated by his side? As soon as he saw his father, Rishasanga ran forward and fell prostrate at his feet. Father, forgive me. Arise, my child. Rishasanga, do all that would please the king. Beget a son and then return to the forest said Vibandaka and Vibandaka then blessed everyone present and left for the forest. In due course of time, when a son was born to them, Rishasinga and Shanta left the palace and went to the hermitage, where they spent the rest of their lives in the spiritual pursuits. So, friends, this was the story Rishasinga published by Adarsh Chitra Katha. So, We'll come back soon with a new episode and a new story. Until then, this is Chanda Mama signing off from your channel. I'm Chanda Mama. Thank you for watching this video. Do like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.